Hi, I'm Seth Grover at the Idaho National Laboratory. Today I'm going to show you how to configure Malcolm to receive, parse, and index third-party logs, which can then be analyzed using OpenSearch dashboards. Malcolm uses OpenSearch and OpenSearch dashboards for data storage, search, and visualization, and Logstash for log processing. Because these tools are data agnostic, Malcolm can be configured to accept various host logs or other third-party logs sent from log forwarders such as FluentBit and Beats. Some examples of the types of logs these forwarders might send include system resource utilization metrics such as CPU, memory, disk utilization, network traffic, etc., system temperatures, Linux system logs, Windows event logs, process or service health status, logs appended to textual files, like tailing a log file, the output of an external script or program, messages in the form of MQTT control packets, and many more. The information in this video is also covered in the Malcolm documentation on GitHub under Forwarding Third-Party Logs to Malcolm. I'll share the link to that document in the video description. Malcolm can receive logs from data shippers over a TCP socket listening, by default, on port 5045. Enabling this listener is easy using Malcolm's install.py script with the dash dash configure option. From the Malcolm directory, run dot slash scripts slash install.py dash dash configure. There are many options that aren't relevant to today's topic, so I'll fast forward through those until we get to the one we're interested in. I'll answer yes to expose filebeat TCP port to external hosts. You'll also need to make sure this port is open in your system or network's firewall configuration so that these messages can reach the Malcolm listener on TCP port 5045. You'll likely choose the defaults for these next few options. First, we'll specify that the messages sent by our forwarder, FluentBit in our example today, will arrive as JSON formatted documents. FluentBit will embed these documents in a field called message which we'll specify here as the source field. The target field in Malcolm under which these messages will be decoded is by default called MiskBeat, which stands, of course, for miscellaneous beats. We'll then tell Malcolm to drop the original JSON encoded event from the message field after it's been successfully decoded, and to apply the special underscore Malcolm underscore beats tag, which will signal Malcolm to do some special processing on these logs to ensure that they're indexed sanely. Any and all of these values we've just set may vary according to your specific needs. For today's demo, I'll accept the defaults for the rest of the install.py prompts. Now that Malcolm's been configured, we'll run dot slash scripts slash start to start Malcolm and wait a few minutes for it to initialize. If we want to flex our Linux muscles a little bit and check to make sure that port is actually open, we can use any number of tools to do so, such as the slash dev slash TCP file system, the Telnet utility, or Netcat. With Malcolm up and running, let's turn to configuring a forwarder that can send its system metrics to Malcolm. My preferred metrics processor and forwarder is FluentBit, as it's fast, flexible, and portable. Elastic Co's Beats family of data shippers is another option. For today's examples, we'll configure FluentBit to send CPU metrics from a Linux host and Windows event logs from a Windows host. To help you download and configure FluentBit to send to Malcolm, there are a couple of scripts under Malcolm's dot slash scripts slash third dash party dash logs directory for Bash on Linux systems and PowerShell on Windows systems, respectively. We'll use these scripts to do the FluentBit configuration. Before we start, we need to grab a couple of SSL certificate files from Malcolm for the FluentBit client to use to securely connect to Malcolm. These three files, ca.crt, client.crt, and client.key, can be found under Malcolm's filebeats slash certs directory. You'll need to transfer those files, 
along with the Fluent Bit Setup convenience script I just mentioned, to the host where you're configuring Fluent Bit. We'll start with the Linux host example using fluentbitsetup.sh. This script can also be used in Bash on Apple hosts, running Mac OS as well. We will run fluentbitsetup.sh and we're provided with a menu of the various steps of the setup process. We want to go through all of them, so I'm going to select zero for all. We're prompted to install FluentBit via its GitHub Pages bootstrap script. This is the method of installation likely to be compatible across the most Linux platforms. So we're going to select yes, and FluentBit will go through its installation process. Once FluentBit is installed, we're prompted with a list of input plugins. FluentBit provides dozens of input plugins, all of which are described in the FluentBit documentation online. For today's example, we're going to send CPU metrics, so I will select the entry number 2 for CPU. For any of the input plugin's configuration parameters, hitting enter without specifying a value will accept FluentBit's default value, while entering a value overrides it. For example, if I want to send CPU metrics every 5 seconds instead of the default, which I believe is 1 second, I can type 5 here for interval underscore sec. We're also prompted for host and port information for the connection to Malcolm. I'm going to put that in now. Since we've already told Malcolm we'll be sending events in JSON format, choose JSON lines, which is the default for the output format. I'm going to nest the CPU values under a CPU heading, and I'm also going to add a field called module with the value CPU as well. That's just to make it easier for me to organize and, and find those events later when I'm looking at them in the dashboards. The convenience script now shows me the command line that will run FluentBit with the settings I've specified. You'll note that the TLS certificate files ca.crt, client.crt, and client.key are already auto-populated, as I had already copied them into the directory before I started. On Linux platforms with systemd, the convenience script can also configure this command to be run as a systemd service. So I'm going to choose yes here, enter a service name, I'll choose fluent bit CPU, and I'm going to indicate that I want this service to run as my current user, as opposed to the root user. At which point, systemd service is created and started. And after a few seconds, as you can see, the service is up and running. Um, I can see fluent bit is running in my system. I can see it's running with the parameters that I had previously specified. And if I want to check on it later with systemctl, I can do so. And I see that it's running. At some point, uh, so at this point, the data is running, it's being collected, and it's being forwarded to Malcolm. Um, if I, at some point, I want to stop or remove that service at a later date, it's simple to do with systemctl. As you can see, now it's stopped. The process for configuring FluentBit on Windows is very similar. Here I am at a PowerShell prompt on a Windows host in a directory to which I've copied the ca.crt, client.crt, client.key, and fluentbitsetup.ps1 files. Just for fun, I'm going to do a test net connection to verify that I can connect to the TCP listener of my Malcolm instance. Uh, listening on port 5045. So, and it looks like it was able to connect, so I shouldn't have any problem sending events from this source. Uh, I'm going to run the fluent bit setup.ps1 script, and I am asked if I want to download fluent bit to the current directory. 
I'm going to say yes, and the FluentBit zip file is downloaded from the official FluentBit download site, verified against its expected SHA sum, and extracted. Once FluentBit is extracted, we're prompted with a list of input plugins. FluentBit provides many input plugins, all of which are described in the FluentBit documentation online. For this example, we're going to send Windows event logs, so I'm going to choose the menu item for Win EVT log. And just like we did for the Linux example, we can choose the defaults or override them with our own settings. I'm going to forward events from the application security setup and Windows PowerShell channels. And I'm going to select the defaults for the rest of the parameters. We're prompted for host and port for our connection to Malcolm. Uh, since we've already uh, told Malcolm that we're going to be running, um, sending events in the JSON format, we'll choose JSON lines, and we're going to nest the CPU values under WinEVT log and add a module value called WinEVT log. Um, just like the Linux setup was able to do, uh, the convenient script, if we want, will allow us to create and start a service that will automatically um, start this, this fluent bit forwarding and collection when Windows starts. Um, we will go ahead and say yes in this case, and we're gonna give it a service name, fluent bit uh, win EVT log. And it says, what account do you want to run this service under? We'll choose our current account and give it permission to do so. So now the Windows service should be running. Um, we could verify that if we wanted to. Let's look at our task manager. And we see FluentBit is right there. It looks like it's running. We could look at the services and verify as well that our FluentBit Win Event Log service is currently running. So we should be receiving events. Uh, in the in the Malcolm side from the Windows events that are that are being generated on this Windows system. If you need to remove the service later, you can use SC to do so. SC.exe stop and then the name of the service, followed by SC.exe delete and then the name of the service. We'll stop and delete the Windows service that was created. Now that our metrics and log data are forwarding to Malcolm, Let's look at the data. Of course, Malcolm doesn't come preloaded with dashboards for all possible third-party logs and metrics, but it's easy to view the data using open search dashboards, discover view, or to create your own custom visualizations and dashboards to examine events from FluentBit or other third-party forwarders. So uh, opening my browser, I am navigated to Malcolm's instance of open search dashboards, and I'm on the home page. Uh, I'm going to click visualize and analyze and then choose discover now op uh, as discover opens you'll notice that I've got a search error indicating that I don't have any uh, data in the sessions index pattern which is what our network traffic metadata like PCAP ingested files and whatnot would be indexed under uh, but instead I'm going to choose the Malcolm beats index pattern, which is where our third-party logs and metrics can be found. Uh, there are a few different ways to filter and inspect this data. Um, right now we're just looking at a breakdown of all of the you know, all of the different logs here just kind of in a unstructured view. Uh, expanding any of them out would show us the the individual values or the JSON for that particular log. Um, I find the easiest way I think to distinguish between these different types of logs um, would be to look at the uh, event.module field, which is being populated because we, we, as we set up fluent bit, we told it to put a value in module that would help us to know kind of what that data was. So uh, as we look at event.module, I can click on this and I can see some different values. Um, right now I've got my Nginx access logs, which isn't really relevant to what we're doing today. But I've also got my win log uh, values here. Uh, you'll note that in FluentBit earlier, we used the win EVT log, win event log. 
and then there was also a separate win log value for the Windows Fluent Bit data source. Um, there's some kind of special processing I do in Malcolm to normalize those two, those two into the same event type. So this is where our win log is going to be found. Uh, and then on Linux, uh, I've got set up the CPU one that we, uh, we set up, and then also a thermal and a memory one that I set up prior to starting this video. So um, I can see these values here, and then I can make that the primary uh, field for my um, for my data source here for my for my discover view. I mean, and you know, choose any other types of events that I would be interested in seeing, um, including like you know, data set or you know, result or uh, action, whatever whatever I would be interested in seeing. Um, the other thing I could do is filter by a particular type of log. So, for example, if I uh, I'm looking at my event module here, and I filter on my Windows event logs, now that's all that I'm seeing here. And I could do you know something else like looking at you know the computer name for the Windows event log or the. Um, provider name. There's my provider name for the, the provider of the log. Or my, um, I don't know, activity ID? Whichever ones of these are interesting to me. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter here. But anything that I was interested in, of course, I could, I could, you know, expand and add to my, um, add to my view here. Uh, and then, of course, any of these values could be started into a, a visualization. So I could just click visualize here. And it's going to bring me up with a bar chart, and I can, you know, customize things, or I could start my own bar chart and just uh, just provide this field name here. So it's very easy to see the data. It's very easy to kind of start your own visualizations. It's easy to expand these out and see the kinds of um, you know the kinds of strings or the kinds of logs or whatever happens to be logged here. That's it. We've learned how to configure FluentBit to forward metrics, logs, and events from Linux and Windows hosts to a Malcolm instance. Check out Malcolm on GitHub for more documentation on this and other topics. Thanks for watching.